let me introduce our guest today, Aim. Uh, why don't you say hi? Thanks so much for coming on today. Hey, nice to meet you. Uh, very glad to be here and a bit scared. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be scared. There is uh, only the loving community here to just pick your brain and ask you some fun questions. Um, why don't we get started? Amrik, what is your role at ShakePay? What do you do here? Uh, um, I think I just updated my Discord uh, entitled Reflected, but I'm a, I call myself the Backlog Bouncer. And, uh, the Backlog um, Bouncer. Yeah, uh, exactly. And I don't know what's the best title I, I, I found uh, in, in those uh, latter day, but basically like the idea is just that uh, I'm trying to help the team um, build the things. So I'm in the engineering side of things and uh, like uh, trying to figure out uh, with the project manager and the whole of the stakeholders at Chickpea uh, what it is that the uh, engineers should build and uh, mostly telling people People like yeah we, we can't build that much we need to build the right things <laughs> so backlog bouncer very cool very cool uh, just so the people in the community can kind of get a sense of things Amrik is one of the early developers that was hired for shake pay so he started from the the very bottom he's been with us from the very beginning and um, has a lot of insight as to you know how shake pay has been built from the ground up um, Amrik that brings me to my next question what does your day to day look like? You know, what is a day in the life of a developer at ShakePay? Yeah, so, um, to be clear, uh, that was the day that I used to have as a as a dev because uh, I've been a dev for quite a while at ShakePay, and I would say like for the past month, uh, I'm more on the management side. So, uh, I used to build things, code things, uh, most of the time where uh, it would look like a regular day, like uh, in most uh, tech companies, like you have a scrum in the morning. Uh, you try and figure out what is the thing that uh, you want to work on, uh, you need to work on, and so on. And uh, you do some PR reviews, you uh, like write code, uh, ask people to review your code and uh, push the product. Uh, this being said, I guess today uh, there are a lot more calls uh, involved. Uh, but I still sometimes, from time to time, trying to review code and annoy people with my comments on pull requests. <laughs> <laughs> Always annoying people, I've heard. Yes. Uh, that's a requirement at ChickPea. Like, uh, you cannot be convenient. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> really good, great answer here. Um, Amrik, can you tell us a little bit about what you were doing before you started at ShakePay? So, prior to you know starting as a developer and working with this great company, what were you doing prior? Uh, so, um, well, just before that, I was a .NET developer. And uh, if you ask a JavaScript shop uh, who does crypto, what does a .NET developer do uh, here? That's that's quite a good question, but uh, another one. And uh, if you go even further than that, uh, I used to be in architecture, but that's another that's another even another story. Um, but yeah, um, before ShakePay, I was doing that like uh, just uh, developing. Uh, I started as a .NET developer when I started uh, developing. Uh, question of opportunity, uh, funny enough, linked to my architecture background. And um, I was lucky enough to work on a mobile environment, uh, developing like a mobile feature in a startup that I really, really liked um, in a bigger structure, but still a startup. Uh, on the product, it was focused. And uh, that's what uh, got me into like uh, my first years of programming. And I uh, really liked it. And so a few different companies, a few different product services and so on, but uh, I went back afterwards to ShakePay to find like a, a product, a driven product uh, driven by a nice team. Very cool, very cool. So you, you mentioned that prior to becoming, you know, a developer full time, you were in architecture. What, what made you change careers? Yeah, uh, I mean, I love architecture. Um, like being an architect, that's a different ball game. Uh, one thing in engineering, and at least I think that's one of the things that uh, Shakespeare encompasses, is that like uh, you are an engineering team, and uh, like you don't build much alone. Like, uh, and even if you start building things alone, like uh, if you're lucky enough to be successful, uh, like you will start building things like in a team, and you find solutions in a team. Architecture, it has some of this, but uh, it's it's a very competing, like you have to compete with your peers, you have to compete with uh, the engineers, you have to compete with the clients um, and so on. It's a very, like it's it's much less col 
collaborative, uh, more like individual focused. And uh, like, I think I fell in love with like the engineering aspect of uh, being in part of a team who like build the best product. So that's what got me changing. But like, I, I love architecture, I love art, uh, like uh, in itself, just the, just the, uh, the job itself uh, is tough and not for everyone. <laughs> I, I can completely understand that. Um, one of the things that I love most about ShakePay is that everyone is working together for a common goal and like, we're all so helpful. We're all so happy to help. And even if we, you know, maybe not have the, the tools that we need, there's always someone else there that we can lean on or we can ask to go to help. And, you know, we, we always have the support that we need here. We're, we're really a, a tight knit team and I love that. Yeah, that's definitely what got me uh, here and why, why I'm saying, even though if, to be honest, we don't always agree on how to help each other. <laughs> <laughs> uh, disagreements are the best part, though. That's how we, we come to build an even better product. Um, my, my next question is, you know, before you became a developer here at ShakePay or even moved into the engineering role, did you go to school? How did you become a developer? Was, were you self-taught? Uh, was there education involved? So first of all, uh, if you want to become a uh, developer, don't go into architecture school. Uh, first of all, like wrong idea, <laughs> uh, wrong path. <laughs> um, this being said, uh, I talk about that, but uh, actually architecture school studies really like brought uh, like a different perspective for me on, on code and uh, we can talk about it. I'm much more of a backend developer uh, and I love, I love architecture also at a code level. So it, it does have a connection. Uh, this being said, I've been very, very lucky. Um, I believe I had an opportunity to join a startup who um, was developing a, a product about um, about um, plan architecture plan management, like and basically like a mobile app to classify and uh, navigate uh, a set of plans, and it can become very complicated uh, for big projects. So this team needed uh, someone with some. Uh, domain uh, knowledge and uh, like uh, I was lucky enough I was offered a job because they said like uh, well uh, if you can share your knowledge on architecture we'll uh, teach you how to code <laughs> that's amazing and, uh, yeah and I did that and uh, at the very same time I was uh, accepted into Concordia's university for programming so uh, I had the chance to have both uh, work experience and uh, university experience uh, side by side. It was really, really interesting years. <laughs> that is amazing. I, I like how you almost bootstrapped your career into developing from your old career as an architect. That is incredible. Yeah, as I said, uh, I was lucky to have this opportunity and uh, I wouldn't be there without this luck and a few, a few people who introduced me to the right person at the right time who needed the, my profile, lucky enough. <laughs> it all worked out. It was all uh, a means to an end, my friend. Uh, <laughs> next question, this, this kind of like ties back to our previous question. Does some of the previous experience that you had before, does it translate well into this role at ShakePay? Uh, you, you mentioned that you were working with .NET prior and you know we've talked about ShakePay being a JavaScript shop you know, were some of those skills translatable into your new position? Uh, so there's a, there's a yes and a no to uh, as an answer to this, uh, to this question. Uh, on the yes part, um, first, I'm very lucky with uh, talented people such as like uh, Roy and uh, Rafa, who both participated in such a call prior, prior to me, um, like didn't care what you build uh, or how you build things before, whether it's .NET, JavaScript, or uh, other languages. Uh, but we cared that uh, like we built something or that I built something. So I could I could talk about that. And that really, really helped because like, I do believe .NET is not everybody's uh, cup of tea. It has its uh, pros and cons, but uh, for me, it was a very, uh, uh, a very good, school uh, of thought in terms of uh, programming 
and uh, in this regard, it really, it really helped me. Like it has, it has some great patterns. It's very Microsofty. It's very, like it's a bit more maybe academic uh, in some ways because it tries to enforce some of those Microsoft patterns. Uh, but like it was a very good uh, school for me, and that that helped me because then like you go to JavaScript, and even if everything is more free, more uh, like more loosely coupled, more like uh, uh, yeah, it's JavaScript. Everything is an object, right? So uh, it. It really helped because you have those strong foundations. So in this regard, tech-wise, I, I do think uh, it helped me. Uh, being That's started. excellent. No, no. Go, really start, go start in a start, uh, on a startup in crypto and nothing can get you prepared to do that. So uh, I guess this whole aspect, like the business aspect maybe, and also the context of being in a startup, like a real startup with just like nine people at the time, like that you cannot be prepared for it. <laughs> I completely understand that. That that's really cool, and it sounds like your your previous experience was a big help. Um, you, like you mentioned, setting up a framework. Now, this is a startup. Is this the very first startup that you've worked for him? So, um, technically, it's the second one. Like the very first one I joined for the. <clears throat> With uh, architecture plan manager, Mant uh, Web App, uh, was a startup acquired by another company who was doing service, um, and like they spin off, spin off uh, like their own uh, product. Uh, what's a bit different is that this this startup was hosted by a, a bit bigger company uh, in Montreal. It was also like bought by an even bigger company uh, on the states in the states. So um, like it was not the same feeling. Both are startup, but I I would not compare like like Techpea was the uh, real startup vibe like in person like and uh, what a damage in the office the first time you go there for your interview I'm in like not a basement but almost like a basement. <laughs> <laughs> I like I like how you put that it's it's it was a startup but it didn't have the same startup vibes. Can you talk a little bit more about what makes ShakePay so startupy? Like what kind of vibes are different here versus another company or you know the previous one that you mentioned uh yeah well first you start your nine uh that means and at some point i think we went down to six unfortunately like but there were some tough times and uh like it doesn't take long before you realize that uh, whatever you're not doing uh you have Activists that might do it, and that's it. Like no one else. So uh, this this sense of urgency uh, sometimes, and uh, this sense of like, what does it take? What do we need to do? And do we need to answer ticket? And I'm sorry, some of you maybe got some answers from me uh, on intercom, but I did answer tickets at some point. Uh, I'm really happy <laughs> we have a talented team of people now doing it. But um, that's that's the kind of thing. So one is like this this sense the impact you have, and and this. Uh, 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 excuse my French. Uh, get shit done and figure shit out. Uh, <laughs> those those things uh, have been told to me by Jean, by Roy, by Rafa, by the whole team uh, at the time. And uh, like you have to experience it. Like uh, <laughs> until you get there, like nine person, like there's no one else behind you. Like it's you just have to go and figure it out and uh, that's a great great experience uh, it makes it very startup really and then there's all the nice thing about startup that we can talk about like uh, unlimited uh, holidays and uh, and like uh, i don't know winter office and many other things but i think like this this sense of belonging to a team and of like we'll figure things out but the only way because there's only one way <laughs> to go so uh like it's it's a great um, good experience. <laughs> love it, love it, and couldn't agree with you anymore. Uh, definitely one of those things that you need to experience before you understand. You know, us us saying, you know, the startup and that we feel but like our our jobs are doing something and we really make a difference. Saying it is one thing, but experiencing it is another, and and it's hard to actually put into words what that's like. And, and I love it. Um, Imrik, tell me about working remotely. Has was there any challenges starting in a remote position versus, you know, working in a traditional business setting? Um, for me, there was. Uh, I think some some people are like are more talented to be to be remote uh, and so on. I think one of the one of the challenges that like uh, when when we started, um, like we had one person like Rafa. But, you already met uh, uh, on this call uh, was in Brazil, and um, 
like we always said we can be remote we can like work from remote and so on but work pretty well but like like making sure like it was always accommodating and making sure that like we we integrate rafa and rafa would say like we have to be like a remote first company and like i i really love his his um his views on and his vision on this because uh that's it and the problem of being like the difference between like accommodating someone and being remote and becoming a remote first is that like you do not have second class citizen you do not have like it's not like you're not accommodating uh, people being remote and so on as that like remote comes first and uh but i have to say for me it took two time for sure um like what does it mean to and even like to date uh, i think we're doing very really, really good and i think we can still like even improve like how to be performant and like we have plenty of questions on like uh, how do you make time for yourself when you're fully remote and uh, hyper connected but uh, in the meantime like how do you make sure that everyone is in the loop and uh, asynchronous how you work asynchronously and so on like many challenges and yet i think we're doing pretty good i love it i really love it I love it. Yes, I agree completely. It was a, a bit of a challenge at first, but once you kind of get the hang of it, it's it's almost like you can get more more accomplished. You know, the autonomy that we get we're given is incredibly powerful in the sense that you can really judge, you know, how much work you can get done in a certain time frame and having your own time to yourself, being able to separate work from play, so to speak. It's uh it's an experience, something to get used to for sure. It also brings like the diversity it brings like uh like this is such a trade-off like uh that's that's what i love like we have people uh doesn't matter brazil uh, in, in the us in europe uh in bc like like the diversity of people and also like you have to learn to work smarter like how do you work when you cannot have your answer synchronously right away uh, and so on uh, you also learn the value of face to face because you still do face to face so uh, you learn the value of things the value of face to face uh, time uh, and it's it's really really interesting yeah yeah completely get that um that's awesome what are some of the skills that you've been learning or that you've learned since starting at shakepay you know you you were one of the early members of the team what are some of the things that you've learned since being here? Uh, not necessarily dev wise, but even in a management sense or a personal sense. Maybe you've discovered things about yourself that you didn't know before. So uh, if you can click it, you can automate it. Uh, and uh, I will give give that again to Roy and Rafa. But like at some point, like a click, if if a click can make it, uh, there's a worker that can make it, and it's a it. It sounds very like naive and simple, but like uh, coming from .NET maybe, which is sometimes like a bit more architecture and so on. Like it's good to come back to this, but like uh, we can make it like if like we can connect to this bank, we can do automate those things. Like there's a way to find it, and with that comes also like going to prod. Uh, as I said, by the first maybe like uh, really really uh, startup, but uh, but I don't. And uh, like you go to prod, you go to prod all the time. We have like short sprints and. Um, like it doesn't mean that you go to prod at any cost, uh, but uh, you find like what's the MVP? What can we discover? What what is it that we can deliver value to our uh, you guys, our users, uh, or even like us peers internally, like the tools we need internally and so on. Like how do we get something out uh, fast, even if it's modest, like we're small, we're modest. So that those are values I, I really learned at. at at Shakepay. And then I learned JavaScript, uh, as a matter of fact, like that net guy again. Um, <laughs> and um, I'd say simple, reliable tricks that you can, like, how do you be, how do you, how do you, can you be reliable? Uh, how can you make sure that, uh, I don't know, you don't double pay things and whatnot in simple solutions uh, that don't need uh, like crazy architecture? And more fancy stuff like Kubernetes, uh, a bit of Kafka, and um, I don't know. Uh, yeah, few few things like tech-wise, uh, definitely, and uh, process-wise, like how do you go from nine to seventy? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I can understand that. So, so quite a bit, a lot on your plate, and it seems to me like lots have changed at, over the years. You know, as well as your your professional development and your career development within ShakePay. Why don't we bring it way way back here? Aim, how did you get your job at Shakepay? Tell us the origin story of you starting here. So 
I don't even exactly remember whether I called Roy, Roy called me, or we texted each other, uh, sent a message to each other. But like, what I remember is that like I was on angel list, uh, skimming through all the interesting product and all the interesting startup <clears throat> I put my hands on to find like uh, product driven team and um, and crypto was on my list for for a while and so on. And I remember that I applied to Shakespeare at that time, and I remember very well my call from. My initial call from Roy, I think I was on a lunch break and just like outside answering him and it was like really interesting. Like I was like, yeah, it was getting really interesting. And uh, I can remember also um, like uh, meeting the team. Like uh, I went and uh, meet Roy to discuss, I think, the discuss like some programming challenges and things like that on a whiteboard, old style, non-remote. And uh, I can tell you what I did is that I, on my way in, in the office, uh, I ignored Sophie, but you already also like met, I think, before for some of you. Uh, I ignored Sophie and went straight to, to Roy and talked to Roy to, for too long. Uh, was it like a two-hour call? I can't remember. I know it was long. I really enjoyed it and realized that like it was way over the time that we... Well, uh, I can tell you, I do not recommend anyone to reproduce this at home. Do not ignore Sophie. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> if I had yeah, known at the time, like, no, no, no. <laughs> but uh, no, uh, this, this being said, I think I would just like to stress to, to acknowledge anybody uh, when, when getting it. But I remember the, the talk with, with, uh, with like the engineering team. And then I remember like the talk with uh, Sophie and like thinking like, wow, this might be the, this might be the, the team for me. Um, funny enough, I was on another uh, interview process at the time in parallel, when, in which I was much more involved, and it was much less successful, as you can tell. I was lucky. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it was. Uh, it's a good thing it wasn't so successful because now we got you, and <laughs> well, we couldn't be happier. I don't know. I still, I still think like I'm very, I'm very uh, lucky, and it was, uh, yeah, uh, it was a chance to get the two of them uh, in parallel. And uh, the other one was uh, starting with Head Start and uh, Shakepay won. Uh, I mean, I'm very, very lucky, but uh, like Shakepay made it uh, thanks to the team who like interviewed me at the time and so on. That's great. That's that's an awesome story. So, <laughs> you and Roy, it it happens. You don't know who. But one or the other messaged, you know, each other, and next thing you know, you uh, started with Jake Bay as a dev. That's incredible. Um, yeah, my I next think Angelist has a match thing, so like uh, we matched on Angelist, I think, uh, just like a Tinder date. <laughs> what were the early days at Shake Pay like? You know, you have some incredible insight as to like you've seen Shake Pay been built up from the ground up. You were one of the very very early hires. You know, what were the early days of ShakePay really like? So I think Bitcoin crashed uh, in the very first uh, weeks I was in and uh, I was answering tickets on Intercom from time to time, like when it was really like too much, uh, it transfers were not fully automated and uh, the office just got flooded. Uh, it was a bliss, a real bliss. <laughs> this. <laughs> uh, I mean, like that should get you prepared to to be in a startup. Uh, this being said, like uh, I'm joking, but like um, uh, like the high impact. Uh, I remember like uh, the first task was like uh, get this task done for by the end of the week, and it will be in prod. And it's like in prod, and it's like yeah, what you code the thing and you push it to prod. I, and I was working with a team helping me out on on uh, building things and getting like uh, on ramp on the on the backend code and uh, making sure that uh, I could push the pod. So uh, this, again, this collaborative uh, work with high impact, uh, I'm like, uh, I think I, I, sorry if you still receive this email, but like, uh, I think you do kind of, but like uh, it was uh, some some email when you log in to let you know that you, you logged in and so on. It was one of my very first tasks I can still remember. And um, yeah, uh, like, Next thing you know, uh, one week later, you start receiving these emails when you uh, log in into ShakePay to let you know that uh, your account, account is being accessed, and uh, that's great. And uh, from then on, it was just like uh, this this focus on delivering new features, uh, new tools, and so on. It's uh, very, very nice. Very cool. Like, such humble beginnings. You know, it started off as just this little added you know, feature for our users and now look at what we've created. Uh, really cool. Um, next question, maybe prior to ShakePay, what was your first uh, introduction to Bitcoin? 
and maybe blockchain. Uh, a, a post on AngelList. Uh, I'm sorry, like we don't use AngelList anymore. Like we use Lever, doesn't matter. But uh, a post on uh, AngelList about like a crypto company, and I was like, maybe I should at least read uh, Nakamoto's paper so that I can know uh, what we're talking about when I go talk to these guys if I have the chance. So that was my first introduction because um, I think the blockchain was on my mind for a while at the time, but uh, never really got into it. It's like, oh, I, I really want to check on this tech, tech and so on. And, um, and my second experience was Roy showing me how to properly send um, Bitcoin to a wallet and back to uh, your ShakePay account, uh, quite in disorder, uh, not much time apart. And um, up, like even like today, I still have this uh, not complex, but I still like I'm very I have a modest knowledge uh, of crypto far more than I used to have at the time. But uh, <laughs> like considering like the the team we have at ShakePay and some of the some of the crypto knowledgeable people we have like uh, i'm always like very modest in this regard but um but yeah that's it no completely understandable um interesting to know that you know you were aware of the blockchain technology prior to bitcoin maybe let me ask you what like do you remember when or you wanted to start a career in blockchain um really like uh like i'm like i think so three uh, three years ago now, so twenty eighteen, um, like like we were talking a lot about Bitcoin, right? Like uh, for the reasons we know uh, now. But um, like one thing is that like reading Nakamoto's paper and reading about like uh, how the, <coughs> the, the the algorithm concepts uh, <coughs> that supports crypto uh, that I found very elegant, like the the, the algorithm, like the how do you have like consensus and uh, <clears throat> uh, very, very simple in many ways, an elegant uh, solution to uh, building a consensus and uh, how like you use like uh, proof of work and uh, have like a uh, cryptographic solution on like how to to verify a transaction in a distributed way where you don't need any any centralized power to to take a decision to, because like you can verify the consensus uh, like i find this idea very elegant like uh, on, on a scientific level uh, on, uh, or more likely um the science level and uh, yeah that's what that's what like uh, really got me hooked uh, uh, in the first place i think technologically speaking uh, i find it very elegant <laughs> I, I completely agree. I, I think it's the underlying technology that really brought me into this space as well. Um, what do you think blockchain will do for the for the world in the future? Like, I know that this is a little bit of a personal question, but you know, how do you see blockchain evolving maybe in the next ten years in Canada or the world? Let's just let's keep it simple. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm not sure this is keeping it very modest uh, to ask me what I think it will be for the world. <laughs> but, um, uh, to be honest, I find I still find it like uh, very overwhelming. What what I love, I think it's uh, like many great technology uh, at the time, like uh, trying to foresee uh, what what it can bring. When I when I see uh, what we build on on blockchain and on Bitcoin, uh, on Ethereum, and so on, uh, like uh, like I I had to understand what an NFT is and what ownership means. Like like uh, like you redefine ownership. Uh, uh, at this very essence uh, and uh, wealth and and uh, also like in all of the DeFi world like all like I'm feeling sometimes just overwhelmed by it uh, to be honest but uh, I'm I'm very excited to to just like uh, contemplate uh, the great things that people people build and I do hope that uh, ShakePay we will manage to have our modest uh, modest say in it. Uh, and then we'll see. But uh, yeah, I am I'm, I'm contemplating all the possibilities that this offers and like how smart people uh, like uh, uh, are uh, regarding blockchain and how they leverage it. It's it's amazing. I, I like how you said liberated. I, I think that it is an, a liberating technology at, in its essence. It's really freeing the people in a way. Um, let's talk a little bit about ShakePay's tech stack. 
Um, we we mentioned earlier that it's a JavaScript shop, but maybe there are some listeners that are interested in a position as a developer or engineer. Maybe we can let them know, you know, what is driving ShakePay? How is it built? Yeah, sure. Um, I'll start with the tech stack and then I can jump on a bit on like yeah, also like languages and so on. But uh, yes, we up uh, today uh, we are still like a JavaScript shop, uh, as in our app is built in React Native. Our web app is in Vue.js, and um, our backend is a Node app, and uh, so are our workers and cron jobs, and uh, and all of this is being hosted uh, on an infra um, level uh, on Kubernetes, uh, which is provisioned by uh, AWS. So we just like host our Kubernetes cluster on AWS. So. And final piece, that is one of the latest things we, we added to our like set of tools, uh, big set of tools is uh, Kafka. We're still like uh, getting starting with it, but uh, this is for message processing and making sure that like, um, yeah, we have, we, we can process events, uh, stream events and, uh, and so on. So that's like a well, very, very fast description of our tech stack from front to infra. But, <laughs> That's what it looks like. And uh, this being said, uh, if you ask me, like uh, I think I think we have uh, a very uh, like like we like uh, people with uh, diverse backgrounds. Uh, like uh, as said, uh, I used to be in .NET and so on, just like a builder. And um, like we've never been like we we've never been against like any other languages for example like uh, if not javascript uh, it can be something else like uh, the advantage uh, one of the powers i think of uh, having uh, things built in such a way such as uh, using kubernetes and uh, and so on is that like you can you can come up with like pods with like different languages workers with different languages if needs be like if uh, at some point like data science needs some python work we could like we could, I could see, and uh, I discussed that with other team members. We we could see other languages making it uh, at ShakePay, as long as it's the simplest, uh, um, most efficient solution for for our business needs. And I think that's uh, that's what we uh, that's that's what I really like at, at ShakePay. This this focus on like uh, if it's what we need, like let's let's go for it, as long as we prove it's what we need. I like that as well. It's, you know, it, as long as it solves the issue and it's the best way to solve it, we're willing to look at anything. Um, I think that speaks mountains about, you know, how we are building an app for you and for us. Like, essentially, we we build what we want and what you guys are looking for, right? It's it's not like a product that we just amassed. It's, it's something that we personally use and uh, we're thinking of ways to make it better for you guys. Now, next question. And I'm sure everyone in the crowd wants to know, are we currently looking for developers? And maybe what positions are we hiring for, if any? Mm -hmm. um, so um, yes, we are searching for developers. Uh, we're a small team at the, at the moment. We're a team of uh, 12 engineers. Uh, not all of us are developers, managers, uh, data team, QA, and so on. But we're a small team at the moment. Um, and I'd say like, uh, like, uh, I'm lucky enough, uh, from time to time to, uh, interview people for, uh, engineering position, uh, along with us in the team and, and come out matters. Like I'm always so happy to see someone, um, brighter than me, uh, joining the team. Like that's, that's always like a, a pleasure. So if you're a builder and, um, and you want to, to shape this, uh, shape shape the the future of crypto and bitcoin and so on like, uh, come come to us uh, i won't i won't tell you what are the position exactly and uh, to be really honest like uh, uh, roy was cto as well as um anthony on the uh, recruiting side do an amazing job at making sure that uh, our career page is up to date with all the position to make sure that we like figure out the best strategy to to hire the best positions but um go and check it and uh yeah if uh if you're a builder and uh come come join us perfect couldn't have said it better myself uh make sure you check out our careers page if you are interested in a role at shake pay um next question what are some of the technical and we've kind of talked about this during the call but you know what are the, some of the technical skills that we're looking for specifically in a deposition 
Um, I know that you said, you know, it, it's not necessarily a specific language, although we do use JavaScript. I, is there anything that would set you an applicant apart from the rest? You know, something that we're specifically looking for, so to speak. I think I will have a boring answer. I'm sorry if I do. <laughs> um, we we like we're searching for uh, cultural fit uh, at a company level for sure, uh, but also at an engineering level. So and uh, I always have trouble a bit uh, defining it like just like that. Uh, I think culture culture is is built on your on your experience on your values. Uh, and so on. But what we what we want is um, people who are driven. But this that's definitely like it's something we want. Like you want we want we want you to be driven by what you're doing, by what you're building. So um, and um, this ability to de to to deliver uh, things, but also like being opinionated and and basically like caring for 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 what you're doing. So and an engineering from an engineering. Perspective, Ten point like engineering culture is is very broad, right? Like it's uh, what you care for uh, in your code and can be very very uh, vast. Um, like uh, from how I don't know, like uh, the attention to details you have or like uh, your architecture skills. Uh, it doesn't matter. Like I think I think like uh, expressing like uh, great strength. Uh, from one side of the spectrum to the other, like from from the most detailed person to uh, the most like architecture system person, like uh, if you're driven, if you if you're talented in what you're doing, like uh, we we will be interested. Like that's that's quite for sure. Uh, I don't think there is a recipe for like uh, how to apply or like how to like like uh, fit uh, shake pay. I think like it's uh, like it's one of the things like we just have to. Uh, Evaluate um, one to one to one uh, mostly, and just like, are we the best fit for you as much as you are for us? Like that's the that's the idea uh, on a cultural level and an engineering cultural yeah. level. Does it make sense? That that makes tons of sense. I I think you really explained it quite well. Um, you've got to be the right fit. I I think at the end of the day, like culture is so much more important, or is just as much import, important to us as your technical background. Uh, yeah, I think I think that's uh, that's fair to say that. Uh, like, I don't think we've ever said uh, no to someone for uh, for some like I don't know uh, the wrong the wrong skill, but uh, the right the like the right level of skill. <laughs> Completely understand. Um, now I I got some fun questions for you. Aim, what is your favorite part of the day? And I asked this to Jill on the last call. I, I just want to know, like, what do you wake up to? Like, what's your favorite part every day come to work? Making my coffee. Uh, <laughs> okay. Okay. Like, I mean, like, how many people answer that? Uh, but, like, you, for, for, those, uh, for those I work with, like, uh, they know, like, uh, we start our day, like, with many things, but, like, uh, we have currently our scrum is at, at ten, right? And how many times do uh, do we like all gather for Scrum? And I'm in front of my coffee machine, just like grinding coffee beans. And how many people heard me grinding coffee beans? It's a very annoying sound, by the way. Every morning. Uh, <laughs> every morning in a call, uh, like just suffering and the sight of me uh, and the sound of me uh, making coffee. So, um, but uh, I also fun. like it because it's it's like it's the virtual coffee machine, right? Like uh, we, <laughs> we have a post cram, we try to figure out like what we're working on and so on. Sometimes it's very boring, sometimes it's really, really nice. Sometimes it goes like uh, nowhere or like it doesn't end. Or, um, but I'd say maybe my favorite part of the day is uh, from time to time after a scrum, like uh, a few people stay on the call and have like uh, uh, talks about like, uh, tech about like code about like architecture sometimes about coffee or dogs uh not cats uh, like another <laughs> channel uh, sorry <laughs> sorry cat lovers i promise don't 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 get angry um but uh i, I really like i think uh the the togetherness of uh, engineering especially when we start talking about uh engineering and like uh brainstorming on like uh, hey how do we how do we solve this problem and so on Excellent, excellent answer. I, I loved how you uh, worked in your coffee grinding in there. That That's amazing. 
I'm sure everyone else loves that part of the morning as well. Um, I wouldn't be so sure. <laughs> Amrick, hey, uh, tell us about like, do you, what are some of the things that you do outside of work? Do you have any big hobbies or is there any amazing books that you're reading right now that you'd like to recommend to the community? Um, yeah, um, outside of hobbies, uh, like I, I don't miss hobbies. Like I, I have plenty of them. Um, people always uh, hear me talking about coffee when it's not coffee, it's climbing. Uh, I do, I do. Uh, I'm lucky enough to do to do some climbing. Uh, nothing like uh, like seeing your death uh, brings you back to uh, my problems at Czech Not that bad. <laughs> not that bad, and like gives you a clear mind on the issues you have. So um, and you're never that close to death. It just like feels like. But uh, yeah, climbing. Uh, I'm lucky enough from time to time to 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 be uh, sailing just a bit. But uh, I find this experience uh, very also like liberating. Uh, so in terms of sport and um, people often like hear me talking about my Japanese lessons because they tend to be at a very inconvenient time like they used to be at four o'clock on a Wednesday there's no there's nothing less incon that's convenient than a four o'clock Japanese lesson in the middle of your agenda and I can tell you that forces you to 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 get your your work tidy somewhat and like uh, learn to delegate push back meetings basically like learns you work-life balance in some ways um, so, and it stimulates your brain in others so yeah but those are some of the things I, I, I do for like getting out of Shakespeare and trying to uh, more importantly like uh, come back to Shakespeare and have like fresh ideas uh, and fresh mind um, so yeah very cool um, Adrian. That that's really cool so climbing sailing and coffee <laughs> I guess, I guess, uh, yeah, that's uh, some uh, some me up. Um, here, I got a question from a shaker that couldn't be here today, but he really wanted to ask you if you had to choose one of these two things for the rest of your life, you could only choose one wine or cheese. I'm out of here. I'm <laughs> <laughs> like um but um i mean i mean um like the wine uh it's just the same it's just the same uh like flavor complexity as cheese in many ways uh but you get the alcohol on top of it so <laughs> the added bonus of the alcohol yeah. in there that's what tips the, tips the scales correct Definitely. Uh, again, uh, born and raised French at some point. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Hey, Rick, I have one more question for you before we actually turn the tables and let the community start to ask some questions. Uh, it actually looks like Rafa is up on stage ready to ask you a question as well. Um, do you have any role models in the industry or any Twitter accounts that you're personally following? Like, where do you get your alpha? Who are you listening to? Who do you look up to in this industry? Man, and you brought Rafa on stage now. I'm scared. <laughs> um, that's a good, good thing. Uh, so uh, I'm. Uh, I'll be. I'll be quite honest. Uh, I do have a Twitter account, and uh, I was. It was still saying I was a junior C sharp junior developer until like uh, I think four weeks ago. So that's how much. Uh, I use Twitter, so I do not really follow anyone on social networks. I'm not very social network person. Um, if any, it's more like on art and architecture sometimes for for those. Uh, this being said, um, um, like uh, Jürgen Apello uh, is uh, one writer. He wrote Management 3.0. Uh, I did not know I could be interested in any management book, and um, this guy redefined for me like what management was, uh, seeing it from uh, the point of view of evolution and uh, competition and creativity. It's very interesting, very well structured. So uh, that was one. And um, Bob Martin, uh, .NET guy says Bob Martin King Code. Uh, I read that quite a while ago, and it was already written quite a while ago since it's 2008. And um, I still love this book because. Um, like uh, it's it's very very simple things that like uh, really help me as a as a coder just like understand what code means uh, more than like a recipe for being clean code uh, it's it's more like uh, what it means to be to, to be coding and I, I I love that it's applied it's okay so yeah even like uh, 
I don't know, uh, 13 years later, I still, I still think it's a, it's a great book. And uh, the rest of my, of my role models, I, I have to say I'm lucky enough to have uh, very talented people around me, uh, whether at Chickpea or um, people I work with or I climb with, which are like great developers, really like, like mentors that uh, also feed me uh, sometimes with uh, with great uh, articles uh, and so on so uh, those people like uh, like I wouldn't be where I am today without uh, those few mentors I have uh, outside of work too uh, which just like nourish my my, my mind with uh, with like great coding principles and, and management principles and so on so network funny enough uh, i'd say a uh, real life network uh, maybe uh, on top of uh, bob martin and maybe fuller uh, and you're gonna pedo excellent answer and what we'll do is we will link those two books in the discord so if anyone from the community wanted to check it out i highly recommend i currently am reading a book called snow crash it's uh it's a fantasy book, but it, it has a, quite a bit to do with what's happening right now in the decentralized world. Highly recommend that book as well, and we will link it in the Discord. Um, without further ado, I think we should open up the panel for anyone in the community that wants to ask Amrik a question. Um, put your hands up, we'll let you up on stage, and why don't we get started with Rafa. Rafa, how are you doing? Hello. Good. Um, uh... Yeah, happy to be here, like crashing another team. Uh, I, I have to, to came because uh, I have like to, to come like to the stage because um, Emmerich, it's like, um, I know he said like nice things about Ryan, me and like the rest of the team, but uh, he he is really like a paramount uh, uh, a person uh, at ShakePay and uh, personally, like I learned so much from him and I know he, he always makes sure to to improve uh, like uh, the, the code and like everyone around and architecture, everything. Uh, sometimes it, it starts like as uh, little things, like little comments on the PRs, uh, pull requests uh, the, to change code and uh, it evolves to like something that much better. And like many times I found myself like, Oh my God, like, this is so much better. Like, um, and it started like as a simple comment from Rain. Um, but yeah, like, uh, I, I couldn't like get the, the very first part of the, the, the interview because, uh, we were doing what we do best breaking prod, uh, <laughs> but, like, <laughs> but if you guys like that are, are listening and like, you saw like a little glitch on your, on your wait list position. Rest assured uh, that it's all good. Thanks to the amazing ShakePay dev team. Um, but yeah, uh, so I think um, my question to AIM is more in the sense of like, uh, maybe in the theme that like uh, we have uh, in the great country of the Canada of, of the South, we have like Thanksgiving. Uh, maybe we can have something like to be thankful for. Like, so AIM, like what it's like one thing you, you have to pick like that you learn uh, on your time on ShakePay so far, uh, one thing that you learned that like he, it's it's the most like impactful for you. Um, okay, I'll uh, I'll I'll tell a story, and it's a story of breaking pod, <laughs> uh, and I'll tell you why I'm thankful. So um, uh, I was very excited about Node 14. Uh, I don't I won't go in in uh, too many details but there's uh, one operator i really wanted um, to get rid of all the n percent for whoever does javascript anyway i was very very eager and um i started pr real quick um to just like upgrade uh, our node uh, doesn't matter uh, create a pr and very excited and go to people and be like hey please accept my pr and so on review it and uh, i do not test my pr I don't know how many of you like uh, coders uh, push a PR without testing it. I'm mean, like, try and do that to me, I might. Uh, so yeah, well, I did not and uh, did not test it in QA, whatever. I did all the mistakes um, because I just wanted this PR to go to go fast and um, and push to prod uh, with with the benediction of uh, three of us in the, in the team uh, and so on. Push to prod, it doesn't take like 10 minutes, uh, prod is crashing. <laughs> Like, crashing pretty bad. Like our ad text goes to, to zero. Uh, sorry for anyone who uh, experienced this this uh, delay. And and uh, so I pushed 
I put this thing, like everything crashes and uh, we go, we revert and whatnot. And in, in the meantime, I'm texting um, my partner and I, I tell her, I'm like, uh, oh, fuck, it's not, not really good. I feel pretty bad. I, I broke broad and in the most like junior way possible. And she, her answer is like, uh, but, but uh, oh, fuck, your, your, your teammate must be, must be uh, mad at you, right? And I'm like, what? Oh, they're helping me. <laughs> and and uh, and that's why I'm thankful. And uh, I keep telling like uh, her and a few friends from time to time. Like I have to remind me to to thank the the team I'm working with uh, at JP because uh, that's the kind of team I I have. And like I've, I'm so happy. I'm really really happy uh, to work with with uh, those guys. Uh, like having such a safe environment uh, when you can break part and people like help you when everybody else outside of it company would say, uh, expect them to just like be a bit mad at you for doing a junior mistake. I'm not junior anymore. You can see on my avatar how much hair I have. Uh, I'm not junior anymore. <laughs> uh, so I'm thankful for uh, finding my team, uh, really. Uh, I don't think it's easy to find the team that fits you. And uh, yeah, um, that's it. Uh, does it make sense? Awesome. That's a great answer. Like, thank you so much for answering that. I would just like you to comment on the energy energy consumption of Bitcoin. I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Rafa, amazing. Uh, thanks so much for coming up on stage. And thank you for putting out fires in prod. That was, that's awesome. Can you guys Otherwise... hear me? Oh. Oh, there yeah, you go. Good. Hey, how's it going? Going great. Thank you for coming up on stage. What's yeah. up? First time caller, long time listener here, big fan of ShakePay. <laughs> so uh, I just I just wanted to ask Emrick, so how has your experience been working at such a rapidly growing company? Um, what are some of the, the pros and some of the challenges that you faced in your role on the engineering team as the uh, company has grown? Uh, what the duck am I doing? <laughs> Uh, is a question that comes back more often than not. <laughs> um, like I think, I think uh, one of the challenges um, that I just I experience is uh, I started as a full stack developer. Uh, quickly enough, uh, I was not used so much on front end. I mean, I am, but uh, I went more back end. And then, like you go more and more back end, um, you also uh, start helping a bit on infra. Uh, then, like you start helping on uh, the management side of things because we're growing on. Um, I'd say like uh, the level of uh, redefinition of what you're doing and um, like finding finding like how to bring like. How to how to bring the most value to to the company you you work at in this uh, ever growing uh, space? It's uh, it's yeah it's quite a, quite a challenge uh, a, a a very interesting one and sometimes a very confusing one. <laughs> So uh, that's uh, that's maybe one. Uh, the other one is remembering who I met in person or not. Uh, we were like met me in person uh, in our office sometimes. Uh, it's like, hey, wait, did we meet in person? Or are you this person? Uh, that's another challenge for me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for the answer. Yeah, and uh, I'm thinking uh, of applying to Shake Pay actually eventually. So uh, thanks for the call and. Uh, Keep up the great work, guys. Thanks so much, Aiden. Uh, much. We'll be looking for your application. Cool. Now, who else? Um, Lost, you've had your hands up for a while. Let me invite you up. Welcome, Lost. How are you doing? I think your mic is not working super properly, but if you'd like to DM me your question, I'm happy to ask it for you. Perfect. Thank you so much, Hannah. That would be excellent. Is there anyone else who wanted to come up on stage? I'm also encouraging other shakers if they wanted to come and ask Amrick a question. Please feel free. Put your hands up. I don't know how to pronounce your username, but uh, Grunono asked what kind of coffee grinder you use, Aim, and what your favorite blend is, which feels like an important question to know. Yeah, this is back. Uh, yeah, I, I use um, manual grinder uh, to be, <laughs> be uh, very honest. Um, the, uh, sorry, I have a uh, blank. Uh, uh, I have Kinex in, in mind, but um, 
sorry, uh, I have a memory blank right now, but uh, I have a manual grinder, long story short. Um, and for blend, uh, I use a local Montreal uh, coffee roasters uh, called Pista. Uh, they're in Montreal. I really love them. They're also one thing I love about them is that like they're st like they were started when COVID started, and uh, they started selling like a subscription to get like a, like a three pack of beans uh, a month uh, in COVID to just try and survive COVID. And uh, there was some mishap, and we had like communications together uh, to like find out why I would not get my coffee beans five times in a row, but like their dedication and their drive to deliver like great coffee and great experience and uh, in both difficult times, like I could relate uh, as startup. So um, like uh, I'm still with them, it's been um, maybe like almost two years now or over a year uh, anyway. So uh, yeah, uh, going with them, Pista uh, in Montreal. <laughs> Excellent coffee. So anyone, any Montrealers out there, Pista is the place to check out, um, as per Amrick, and he is a coffee connoisseur, I would say. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt. I, I got the question delivery from the person who was having mic issues. They say, what was one thing you thought wasn't important code-wise, but turned out to be critical later? It's a great question, Moss. Thank you. Oh. Oh, that's a that's a tough one. Uh, uh, maybe I should ask uh, Rafa or T some of the mistakes we we uh, had to fix architecture wise in the code that I produced. There <laughs> um, were definitely quite a few. Um, uh, uh, maybe one is um, I'm I'm very I have this principle of uh, performance as a feature where uh, first you deliver something that works and then you try and fix performance uh, that works sometimes uh, sometimes not so much uh, like uh, I broke a few queries because I didn't care for performance too much and like it doesn't take long before like uh, you guys uh, come up uh, at a similar time and like uh, hit our back end and it, it dies so um, maybe attention to details when it comes to performance sometimes and um, do not underestimate that performance as a feature is good as long as uh, it's sufficient uh, on, a, on a long long uh, on a good period enough uh, yeah that is an excellent question and awesome thank you so much Voss. i have a question for you aim what was the most impactful thing that you've done here at shake pay in your opinion you know what do you think that you're most proud of or you know, that had the biggest impact to our users or maybe just yourself. Yeah, I was very lucky to, uh, there was a time at ShakePay where uh, ShakePay's uh, future was very uncertain. Uh, we were not profitable at the time. And, uh, it was it was difficult time. Uh, I think I saw Jean at some point here and like uh, quite a few of the old shakers here. So, um, and I think Roy came up with, uh, with the idea and it, not sure uh, exactly, but I think I think it's him. But uh, anyway, at some point, like we discussed uh, engineering, and uh, like we like we have this uh, internal building um, to basically like uh, business performance, I'd say, uh, tool so that like uh, we can improve on on uh, our margins and so on, just like making us like a bit more profitable maybe uh, was the assumption it's like that, that maybe could could make it for us so that we can become profitable and it was a very uh, simple and elegant solution that was uh, brought and uh, i was lucky enough to to work on it uh, with roy with the rest of the team at the time like uh, we I, I don't think i built things alone but like my dad but like this this is really something but like it was it was a turning point for check because uh, it did it did make us uh, profitable and uh, like knowing i had a chance to to work on this piece of code that uh, is still running today uh, which is so so important to check pay um, which is also like the combination of like all the engineering team uh, working together to to fix this issue uh, this is maybe where like uh, the, the most impactful thing i i worked on uh, as a as part of the contribution on this uh, on this project that's amazing I, I i love that and i bet you it's very rewarding knowing that 
you know, something that you contributed are is is really like the backbone of, you know, what we're doing here. Uh, very, very cool, Amrick. Um, I think it's actually 602. So the call ran a little bit longer. And I want to thank everyone for joining us today. Amrick, especially you, man, thank you so much for taking the time and chatting with us today. The community got some really good insight as to, you know, what engineering is really like at ShakePay. So thank you so much. And thank you everyone else for joining today. Um, we will be having another Meet the Team call next Thursday. So you better tune in for that. Uh, Amrick, is there anything that you wanted to add just before we leave? No, I just uh, want to thank you all for um, being here. It was a very, very pleasant experience. And um, thank you, uh, Mike and Hannah, for uh, like making this experience uh, pleasant and uh, less uh, scary than, it, than uh, it sounds. So thank you very much, uh, all of you guys. Uh, and uh, thanks, users, for uh, yeah coming here and, and uh, believing in Shake Bay. Uh, thank you very much.